Two more to go, traders. Two more to go. That's uh, central banks and days before it's the weekend. Morning, Kay. Good morning, Ryan. Good morning, everybody. How you doing, mate? All right? Yeah. So far, so high. So, far, so good. <laughs> yeah. Tell me about it. These, these last two weeks have been really, really long, haven't they? <laughs> yeah. But there's one uh, constant in this, right? It's a strong euro and uh, CBs hiking some more than expected. And uh, it's not always making life easier, but uh, all right, here we are. Yeah, and a couple more to go. Yeah, just, before we talk, just before we talk about uh, all the other stuff, there's, there's one that we really need to keep an eye on because we are scratching our head about whether a central bank will do 25 or 50 BPs or stand still. We've got Turkey coming up and they're expected to raise by 11.5%. That's 1,150 BPs if you want a central bank that hikes a little bit. Yeah, some even thinking they may hike uh, to 25%. Yeah. Yeah, so, uh, yeah, <laughs> not talking 25 BPs, we're talking 2,500 BPs. <laughs> exactly. but that one, yeah, that one's going to be a bit of a popcorn moment. We can all sit back and uh, watch the charts and what happens with the Turkish Lira on that one. Not fun and games if you're living there. Um, a couple nope, of folks know them, uh, saying that things are pretty dire over there. So we obviously feel for the people on the ground. Um, while Erdonomics does its thing. Totally, but yeah. we shall see what they bring. Um, and speaking of uh, uh, emerging market uh, currencies, the uh, Bank of England obviously doing <laughs> their thing as well later, which we shall touch upon. Um, right, let's uh, get stuck into it. Um, we're getting a few uh, of the other BOJ members popping up now. Um, BOJ's uh, Noguchi says... Japan's economy is expected to recover moderately. Uh, and the Bank of Japan shows strong commitment for continuing easing. Uh, price expectations are not anchored at the 2% goal. Um, we must keep easy policy to ensure wages keep rising. And it's important for wages to rise continuously, not just once. Uh, it says it's desirable for wages to rise next year more than this year. Uh, declining last year, declining the yen last year was too rapid, and the decision last December to widen the allowance band around uh, the yield target was not monetary tightening. So this BRG member is looking uh, far, far ahead to next year in terms of wages, um, which we've got to do as well, um, slow and steady, as we've been saying for a long while. Um, right, more central banks popping up uh, this morning. The SMB hiked rate by 25 pips, uh, as widely expected, to 1.75%. There were some expectations for a 50. I thought they might uh, side with a 50, uh, but no, they went uh, with a 25. Um, I think uh, certainly what I missed among all that um, is that uh, they now see 2023 inflation at 2.2%. Um, which has probably uh, was the keys to it, this SMB decision and whether they went 25 or 50, um, because they are close to their 2% target. So there is no real need to go uh, hiking in uh, big steps. Um, as I say, I probably missed uh, that conclusion. Um, obviously, Jordan's been out, prepared to intervene in currency markets if needed, prepared to hike further if needed. Um, did say a marked decline in inflation is welcome um, and we cannot rule out further monetary policy tightening. But he did say our monetary policy is significantly more restrictive than one year ago. Um, a less hawkish hike, Kay? Uh, yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. The, it, it doesn't mean they're dull because if you, uh, but the revisions for inflation to come down, so they revised it down for this year, slightly up for next year. Um, but uh, nowhere panicky next year, if I uh, remember correctly. Um, well, we know that they, they, one of their means to fight inflation is also the currency, right? So I don't expect the Swiss to materially weaken, let's say, I mean, materially like Euro Swiss up to 105 or 110, you see. <laughs> but um, there is a case to make here that they seem a little more content and um, I would not be surprised if um, there is a bit of a gradual 
tryout at least uh, for the Swiss to to weaken a little bit on the back of the um, of the SMB. But um, then the, the the threat of interventions will will always be there. Um, also, uh, I, it does seem that if if you um, if you take their inflation coming back to two or two point two, uh, they are still only at one and three quarter percent, right? So if there is somewhere which he didn't really say, but if he they they want to get rates somewhere into positive territory, they will have to hike one or twice more, right? Um, the thing is that is not going to happen unless an emergency meeting before three months because they only do quarterly meetings so yeah. um there may be a case for euro swiss yesterday i was looking at that euro swiss and at that that the way it held around 97 um or just below and i said like okay if they put it down there i'm i'll, I'll, tr I'll give it a try there to go to go a bit long perhaps but they they did not succeed to put it much lower because I do think the market has understood now as well that they seem to be relatively, relatively, everything is relative, but relatively happy with the state of affairs right now. Otherwise, as you say, they would have done 50, right? Yeah, but I, I suppose that what might get missed in the, in the post is that the, the inflation rate is at 2.2%. You know, they're not seeing hot inflation like everywhere else. Um, and there really is no reason to go all guns blazing on rates like everyone else um, no. if inflation is up at six seven percent fine we'll probably be penciling 50s uh for another few quarters um but they are they are at a lower level than everyone else um which yeah. maybe that gets missed sometimes when you look at these sort of things i think it's but, a, um, smb doesn't print cash right uh, or uh, to 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 hike uh inflation much they're actually on the other side they're buying swiss bank back um, yeah that, that is one thing which they understood. Um, and, and for the rest, um, okay, we can't go and say that their economy is booming because it's it's not really booming anywhere. Uh, but the, if you look at their companies and what they are selling as well, <clears throat> uh, compared to, to, to the imports and stuff, it, it's kind of logic that uh, uh, their inflation is a, is a bit less. It's a... It's a really stand apart country, right? Um, you, yeah. You can compare yeah. it in the if you then bring it back to the central bank's world, it's you can compare it to the Bank of Japan. You, it's hard to put them in um, in the bracket of all central banks. You you, you have yeah. to look at it a bit separately from uh, from uh, the rest. Um, and and to talk about the Bank of Japan, this Noguchi is really putting the, car the carriage in front of the horse again. And they, now they say. He says that they need to continue to monetary easing for the wages to go up. I mean, it would have been the opposite. If wages go up, they can start to relax a little bit. But no, um, he says we need to continue to push. So that was a bit of a strange one. Um, but yeah, back on the Swiss, I think it does show um, other ones call it data dependent. They say like, OK, I mean, this is the hike and now we revise the numbers. Now we have three months to to see what's going to happen, right? Yeah, and uh, play the FX markets in the meantime. Yeah, it's easy life, isn't it? <laughs> well, I mean, um, yeah. The thing is, though, they have to take losses, right? Because they have been buying Euro Swiss by the bucket load between uh, 120 and 105. And then uh, now they're selling it out between 105 and 95. So, uh, I mean. Yeah, I'm sure he's, I'm sure George is jumping around money. in between. Uh, they'll, they'll end up with a profit somewhere down the line. Don't you worry about that. Um, yeah, so, and if not, they just write it off uh, like everyone else does. But anyway, that's a different story. Um, moving on to uh, the other side of the coin and the central bank who is still firmly hiking. Uh, Norges went a 50, um, as was widely expected by a lot of uh, banks over there. Uh, so they're now at 3.75%. Um, and with more to come, because the committee's current assessment of the outlook and balance of risks implies that the policy rate will most likely be raised further in August. Um, just on their inflation targets, they see uh, one of their main inflation measures now at 6.3% versus 5.6% prior. Um, and another central bank, a bit like um, the Rix Bank, uh, complaining about the level of the krona and uh, how... They're a bit, a bit of a loss to explain why um, it's moving the way it's moving. Um, what did you make of that point? 
Yeah, okay. Some some of it is, is actually done to themselves because they are selling Norwegian Chrono every day. Yeah. We, we, that, that is one aspect. Um, and, and the market understands that. So so when, when oils and gas, especially uh, European gas, was, was coming down very, very rapidly, uh, Norwegian Chrono got hit. Um, because it it was very hard to uh, <clears throat> to be long of the stuff if 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 the central bank sells every day, you know. Um, I've got the slight impression that they may do uh, come up with a little bit of a surprise at the end of the month because if they're really so adamant about the Norwegian kroner being too weak, uh, they may uh, they may decide to uh, to at least stop those uh, Norwegian kroner sales um, for a while. Um, yeah, I think. <sighs> They have more impact than than than, than um, Sweden because in in Sweden it's it's even more like a, a turtle on on its back and unable to 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 crawl upright again. Um, I think if 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 a central bank can do something, about, um, not amongst the majors, but it's like a second level central bank can do something about it. Maybe Norway is the one that could do it, you know, because they yeah. they they have. Um, still, if, if you look at um, contracts and stuff for exports of oil and gas, and I mean, they have a lot of receivables, a lot of stuff uh, uh, coming in and out. And then uh, uh, I also think it's one of the countries that mostly own their own debt. So I don't think I, there, there is external debt, but I'm, I'm not sure uh, about how much it is to be, to be fair. So they, for them, there they may be a valid case of, of trying to curb this uh, this nutty weakness. Um, the market heard it. The market sent Norwegian Kroner represents percent stronger. But then that's it, or, or one and a half, let's say, uh, if you if you reckon that Euro Nokia Euro came from the 1170s. But um, yeah, now we have to uh, now we have to re uh, rebalance, or, or I mean, reevaluate. Um, for how long it, this this can last? Because as we have already been saying, it's not only interest rates that that matter, right? And if you're at uh, three and three quarter or four percent, and um, and expected, I think their 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 new expectations are to go to four twenty one or something. Um, and but you have an inflation of six percent; it's still not going to be brilliant. Only on that front, I would yeah. say. So I'm still a bit cautious. Um, now I, I I know the answer ninety nine point nine 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 percent, but if you want to, you're talking about uh, countries that are able to uh, affect their currency. Could they do something via the sovereign fund? Could the government do something via the sovereign fund, or you know, is there a complete disconnect between that and everything else? There should be a, the, the sovereign uh, sovereign wealth fund should be um, independent as well. But we know it's it's uh, it's far from right. Um, it's yeah. their oil fund, really, basically as well. And and uh, there's always going to be uh, wishy washy between between the both. Um, now, what can they do? Uh, like purely buy Norwegian Krona, yeah. sell other assets. I I don't know. I mean, they've got to start to sell foreign bonds or so. But um, uh, I don't know if they've got reserves in the in the pot. Um, yeah, the, you can use your reserves, but I, but I wouldn't. I wouldn't. Well, they they should not use it to to sell foreign bonds, for instance, uh, to to strengthen your own currency, because um, then then you lose a part of what the aim of the game is of that of that fund, right? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Anyway, just uh, just an outlier thought. I thought I'd. Uh, yeah, well, it. that's an interesting one. To be fair. Yeah. Uh, that's a very interesting one, um, actually, uh, that, that question. Um, yeah. You never know. It always uh, helps if you try and cover as many angles as possible, but uh, yeah. we, shall see. we shall see. Um, right, coming over to Europe, and uh, apparently the German recession will be sharper than expected, according to the IFO. Um, these guys are usually glass half empty, um, so no surprise to see a uh, dour sentiment from those guys. ECB Schnabel said we must carefully monitor wage price spiral risks. Uh, says that domestic inflation has been driven by profits and wages. Um, wages have been okay over there, and they're going through um, some industrial action and higher pay awards as well, as a lot of countries are. Um, but not quite seeing the type of uh, wage spiral we're getting here in the UK. So 
lower levels, but uh, she seems to think it's the big driver um, of inflation over there in Germany. Um, Fed's Powell bored everyone to tears yesterday afternoon, and as did the politicians. Um, there's a couple of comments. Started off uh, in the testimony, which was pretty much a word for word repeat of the last FOMC statement. No extra bells and whistles lobbed in there. Um, said that uh, repeating that officials see somewhat higher rates by year end, um, saying we are moderating the pace, uh, much as you might decelerate a car as it nears its destination. Uh, the level for rates and speed of rate hikes are separate. Um, talking about housing again, saying housing inflation will come down significantly this year and next year. Um, we'll start to uh, potentially see that in some of the housing data. Um, we're getting existing sales uh, today, I think. Um, I think there's some price components in that. So we'll see uh, whether that's coming to fruition. Um, it says it's hard to know what rate level will achieve the Fed's goals. Um, it says we never use the word pause, and I wouldn't use that here today. Um, definitely not using the word skip yesterday either. Um, overall, he may he went to pains to say that the hikes were not over. That was the, the main sort of theme coming out of that, that hikes weren't over, um, which, again, asks the question, well, why are you paused in June then if you think you're going to need to hike again? Hike now and then worry about it. But anyway, I'm not the Fed. Um, Fed's Goolsby, um, also speaking around about the same time, said the decision last week was a close call for me, uh, trying to figure out if we have done enough already and how much more needs to be done. Uh, it says not decided on the rate decision in July. Fed's Bostic believes rates should stay where they are for the rest of the year. Um, I don't know if you call much of Powell, um, Kay, and uh, the continued waffling mm. over there. Um, did it strike you that he was he was more trying to push the message about rates going up again rather than? Yeah, I, I yeah, we spoke about it before, and I said uh, I think yesterday on Face I said I wouldn't be surprised if he's going to try to fight a little bit about uh, against uh, what the market thinks that a pause could become permanent and uh, and and all those things, and that's exactly what he did, right? Um, we have another round of him by the for him by the way this afternoon, yeah, and then he talks in front yeah. of the other committee. He's gonna yeah. gonna have another another series of uh, um, very and uh, perhaps less intelligent questions. Um, <laughs> yeah, I think he's, he's he's yeah he's going to some lengths to say like, hey, we we may not be done, but we need to we need to see the impact uh, of things. We we can also not forget, and there's very very little has been said about uh, about that. And and of course the the, the man on the street. Or the woman on the street is worried about the housing uh, uh, market and stuff. But um, very, very little is, has been said over the meeting and yesterday um, of quantitative tightening. And because that's still running in the background. And I yeah. guess that is some kind of the hint that Powell wanted to give as well to see like how the financial conditions evolve because you have um, the, the, the other stuff going on, but then also the, the, the quantitative tightening and, um, uh, and and I think that's where he wants to give himself like a, an extra month um, of data of course as well and uh, and and see where we go uh, where we go from here uh, next so somewhere trying to understand what they are thinking I understand what they did uh, to pause whether it's right or wrong I'm, I'm going to leave in the middle really I mean um, I've been saying it a lot of times. Us, us is not the the we we don't we we should actually only judge them by the by the way the markets are moving really right. I mean uh, whether they're right or wrong, they probably were all wrong since uh, since Volcker. So uh, um, we we can't really say that any central banker has a lot of credibility. Um, but yeah, he was he was fighting back a bit. Um, that doesn't uh, take away from the fact that the, the, the dollar is a bit on the defensive, but I think it's got a lot more to do with the strength of the euro now than the weakness of uh, of the dollar. Um, yeah. Uh, uh, especially for the euro dollar, but it's dragging the rest in its uh, in its slipstream um, a bit. Um, but yeah, uh, to me, I mean, the bottom line is they 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 are probably not done yet. Yeah, exactly. Um, I did a little bit of a uh, where are we now? cheat sheet in the room and uh yeah probably 
one, two in the pipe for those guys, uh, mm. whether they pause in between each one. But yeah. uh, certainly their forecast C rates are uh, another couple in the in the pipe. So but mm -hmm. whether they get there or not is uh, another question. And data dependent, as we all are. Yeah, exactly, uh, Ryan. Exactly. If they are data dependent, if they don't know what decision to make until the day of, of decision making, why would we? So we are also equally data dependent. And that's what I've been trying to say since those, those central banks are starting to talk about that is if, if they don't know, we, we should react to data again, you know, and, and with yeah. that we can ex build our expectations for, for central banks. But, that, but I think we are as data dependent as they are. So um, for instance, get better numbers out of the States after a round of uh, relative uh, weakness, the dollar could, uh, could easily recover. Um, versus uh, most most currencies, continue to to get sluggish data. It's probably versus those who are the strongest right now, such as the euro, going to suffer. And then at the back uh, at the back end of the class, you have uh, the Bank of Japan. Yeah, exactly. I'm really but worried for the yen. Huh? I'm worried for the yen. Uh, I mean, if if Ueda and Co just stay like they are now, I I got the impression that the yen is going to get another hammering and the only thing that is going to be able to stop it is the is the mof yeah i think they might struggle this time though um well you know because the you know you take last year that was a combination of, of fed rate hikes as well as what the bank of japan were doing mm -hmm. uh, you know and they were you know the economy was still doing fairly well um so there was a lot of dollar in that dollar yen move uh, as well as uh, yen weakness but if now we're facing a, a, a weaker economic picture, I'm not saying, uh, you know, massive problems, but, you know, flatlining growth and the end of rate hikes, if you start seeing the yen weaken again and it hasn't got that other side influence, that's when I think they've got big problems. Yeah. Uh, because and, they can't but, lay half of it on something else. Yeah. And and uh, and again, if we, if we assume that all those rates hikes are going to start to weigh on economies globally, when are the Bank of Japan going to do something? Because if yeah. it gets okay, your your yen may strengthen a little bit because of the of the correlations and stuff, and, and other central banks needing to stop. But in the meantime, I, I'm just saying in the meantime, it's a relatively short term um, impression that I have, which is give and take a month until the next Bank of Japan meeting. In the meantime, if the market takes it uh, as the way I take it right now. You could be at 145 uh, next week, uh, and uh, and and those yen crosses. If you look at those those the crosses in the yen, it's it's horrible. I, I mean, horrible for the yen. I mean, uh, yeah. we we've all right, we 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 were always looking like, okay, are we going to put in a top here or a top there? And then the euro took over, and uh, and and euro euro yen is through massive levels. Uh, 155 around is is really massive. Uh, it comes uh, uh, back from the 1990s, and uh, um, if you look at Swiss yen, we had uh, Joao in our room asking me to look at Swiss yen today. It's all time highs. Yeah, I mean, tell me if the yen doesn't have a problem. I mean, so that that to me, it is probably still going to be uh, accelerated and then and then probably the mof will have to go to work again to stop the rot uh, or or the big 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 surprise would be uh, would be an emergency meeting of the bank of japan um, because it's not only dollar yen right the yen is weakening versus the whole world yeah exactly exactly and yeah. uh, you know if if they're not in an economic position um, to tighten and if they can't get into one now what they're going to do if uh, global growth is coming down because they'll exactly. get hit with the same uh, cold as everyone else. They're, exactly. And the window is now because the, the additional problem that they had last year was a negative current account. And now yeah. it's, gone, it's gone back into positive and they have wage growth. Why don't you just start normalizing, right? I mean, just normalizing, not, not like massively hiking, but normalizing because if they don't, uh, the yen is going to suffer greatly again, in my opinion. Really. Yeah, because they're already on the floor, and uh, the only direction they've got is into the basement. Uh, exactly. 
So anyway, right. you sending yeah. shivers down my spine, mate. <laughs> no, but I mean, we we have to look at stuff sometimes. Uh, yeah. and, and now we are in the midst of the, of of all those central banks going on and uh, on and on, and and we've seen S and B hike, Norges Bank hike, Bank of England is going to hike. Okay, the Fed uh, was a bit of a standstill, and that's the reason why dollar yen is not breaking 142 and a half probably. Um, but but in the meantime, Ueda and uh, Noguchi overnight are sending the message that they are not going to uh, that they're, they're not even in a hurry. Yeah. To do anything. I mean, that's, it that's it really is scary. It is a bit scary. Yeah, yeah it we, is as a much bit as, scary, honestly. As, as much as you know, we've been expecting changes to their policy. Um, we've got to be prepared if they don't. Um, how screwed they're going to get? So anyway, we'll yeah. that's uh, let's not worry about it today. We'll worry about it tomorrow. Yeah. Um, um, just lastly, uh, the Bank of Canada, uh, in their deliberations, uh, debated whether to hike or hold with the hike signal um, in June. Um, they saw GDP, inflation and housing data as convincing them why they hiked indeed. Um, the market has raised uh, hike expectations for the July 12th BOC meeting. Uh, according to money markets, that's now, now up to 76% chance uh, of a hike, up from 64%. Um, that rise has come on the back of the retail sales we got yesterday, which were fairly okay, um, although it's uh, we're talking April data. So, as usual, they're months behind everyone else. Um, a couple of questions coming in from you guys in the chat. Um Ali talking about gold and whether we're trading quarter end, month end flows. I think we're probably a bit early uh, to start seeing that, but uh, never say never. Um, the same from Mike. Euro seems on a tear. Do we believe funds are front running end of quarter flows? Again, it might be a bit early. Um, I think we're still trading around the central banks and everything that's going on. Um, as we've been talking, it is a, a two sided story you know as we said look at uh, euro yen you know yen is having a big influence here on the back of the central banks on the carry trade and everything like that euro is stronger and the dollar when you look at dollar yen you know that's 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 my go-to pair for what's happening in the dollar so when you're seeing the dollar weaken versus the other majors cable was he um euro whatever um, but dollar yen is remaining positive. You know that there's a big, heavy yen influence in things rather than the dollar. The other signals that suggest um, this isn't all dollar is looking at yields. You know, we're not really going anywhere in yields. We're probably having one of the calmest periods we've had for a long while, um, sitting between 3.7 and 3.8 percent. So, you know, the fixed income markets are, are pretty settled uh, at the moment. Um, no huge volatility coming in and out when we were, you know, flipping 20 pips on a day. Um, big moves coming in there. Um, where you can see a bit of influence for the euro is obviously in euro sterling, um, which is uh, a bit more bid. Where's it gone? There it is. A bit more bid at the moment uh, coming off the lows. We've had a little mooch above 86, holding above 86. Can't get above uh, this sort of area here so it's a it's a bit in the wind especially with uh, the the bank of england uh, just about to drop on that um oh hang on let me shut that up and uh yeah so on to the boe um firstly we need to look at what's coming so the market is largely expecting a 25 pip hike um some of the market are looking now at 50 based on the inflation data um, as always, what we need to look at is where are we? Is the votes? Um, we're expecting uh, seven to two again for a hike. Ordinarily, the votes might be a bit important. Um, what the votes will show underneath the main votes, if you like, is whether anyone votes for a fifty. That might add a little bit of a hawkish slant because you'll get within the minutes and the statement, uh, it may be a seven to two again to hike, but it may be five of those wanted a 50, uh, two of those only wanted a 25. That would put a bit more of a hawkish slant on. Um, also, what would look more hawkish if some of the, if these two unchangers, Dingra and uh, Tem Rayro, 
move into voting for a hike, that would be a bit uh, hawkish as well because they've been the big doves on the board. Um, although, um, who's on the way out? Tim Rovo's on the way out, isn't it? Is this a last meeting, I are, think? Are, are they not both? Uh, yeah, I think, on going, the way out too? I think one's going now, one's going in September. Right, okay. Um, but either way, yeah, both are on the way out. But it would be a little bit of a hawkish noise if, as I say, these two vote for hikes and make it nine mil for hikes. So a couple of things to look at to determine, you know, how hawkish or unhawkish any hike is. Um, what do you think, mate? Do you think 50s are possible or we're going to get the same old level of cautiousness? I mean, I, I don't know how many aspirins uh, um, Bailey will have to uh, will have to take to an ounce of fifty. Um, but uh, I think again, it's it's not something that we can rule out. Um, we can't rule it out. That's the thing. I mean, it's it's like with with the Norgas Bank with uh, what who else did the fifty uh, um, with, with with some of the central banks. You you just can't rule it out uh, because they they will probably now. Uh, be thinking about what are we going to 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 say in half an hour. So um, you just can't rule it out. But if if Bailey is faithful to himself, he if whatever they hike, he will start to say like, oh, this is going to weigh on the economy because it's a bit of a catastrophe, man, right? And yeah. um, base case for me is that if they do twenty five only, sterling is sterling is getting sold. Uh, and if they do 50, then we will have to see what 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 they say. Really, what 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 they they, they will really say about uh, how they view the situation. If it's a panic move, then you probably see a, a knee jerk reaction in the sterling, and then it's getting sold off again. Um, but if they say 50, and uh, we've seen the latest data, and we can weather the storm, whatever, um, then then sterling in in turn will probably see see buyers. So. Um, in case of a 25, I think sterling gets sold. In case of a 50, then we will really have to look at what they they are saying. Yeah, I, I think it's I think it's messy all round because they could yeah. go they could go a 25, but then indicate that there's three more hikes to come, and then that's a different mm. ball game altogether. Or they could yeah. hike a 50, which looks hawkish, and then say, well, then we're going to pause. Um, with these guys, it really is an open book. Uh, I mean. Yeah. You, you, if you go with history, history says that the pound's likely to end up lower. It's got more chance of ending up lower than higher after this, unless it's massively hawkish. Um, and I'm saying that as I'm long the quid. Um, so I, I can see the risks. If it wasn't for um, this mortgage stuff, if it was just purely based on the, the CPI stuff, then I'd be happy sitting in longs. Um, I'm still short euro sterling, a little bit offside by a few pips. Um, if I see a pop in the pound, I'm going to probably take uh, a good chunk of, the, of that trade off. Um, maybe leave a little bit just to see what it does, but I'll lock in the stops. Um, but on balance, sitting here right now, I, I see more chance of the pound being lower by the end of the day than being higher. Mm -hmm. uh, there is no press conference uh, for this one. Uh, there's no monetary policy report. That was last month. So it's just a straight mm -hmm. headline drop statement minutes and uh, dig through the wreckage and see what happens. Um, I, I, so, go on, mate. Yeah, I, I'd say if you if you think about the direction of the pound, you have to be a bit careful against what as well. I mean, uh, choose your choose your other currency wisely. I think if you're looking at a weaker pound, this one that Ryan is just showing will probably be the cleanest trade because the euro is bit already. Um, the euro sterling should be the cleanest trade. If 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 you look at a, a stronger pound on the other side. Um, Perhaps uh, cable is the is the better one because the dollar is on the defensive. So, um, or uh, I was going to say, what about yen. Guppy? What about Guppy? If, and Guppy uh, uh, sterling yen uh, could be the one uh, that you look at. So, I mean, again, um, it, it, of of course, if sterling goes down, cable will probably go down again. But um, it, it might not be as clean a trade as uh, some other trades. So, uh, and. Um, that is also what we, we continually say here. I mean, whatever you think about a currency, think wisely about uh, the other side of the of the pair, which currency you're putting against it. Yeah, exactly. Um, yeah, and I, I'm, I, that's what I think maybe Gup is the one because we know yen is going to remain weak. Um, yeah. So if you have to match off the two, if you're going to get a dip in one, 
um, that's likely to bounce back, it's going to be something like Guppy, yeah. whereas Euro Sterling, um, you know, that might continue up. It might be, you know, this might be a real solid bottom mm. uh, if, because a lot of this, a lot of this move that we've had from May has been rising BOE expectations. Uh, now we know the ECB are more hawkish. If the market doesn't like uh, what's going on in the UK, well, we could be uh, heading back up to that 87 level at the very least. Um, yeah. So, yeah, I think uh, pick your poison, as they say. Know your reasons yeah. on both sides of the trade um, mm. and look for the opportunities. If you don't get the levels you, you want, move on to another trade or uh, have some patience. Um, and, yeah, it's- and, and if you want to understand those moves in the market and why on a higher, on a much higher or much tickier CPI and sterling got sold, it's exactly because the market players will have had their move. They wanted to see yeah. the CPI and then they are moving into the uncertainty of a Bank of England. So there is some uh, logic in uh, in, a, in a pair like Euro Sterling trading higher today than it was on, on, on that CPI. It's just because the market wants to take chips off the table and, uh, and, and we saw cable coming down yesterday, but now it's back up because the dollar is under, uh, under a bit of pressure again. Um, but that that explains yesterday's move. It's just because the market had what it was looking for, and yeah. uh, and then and then started to care, to to manage the positions really. Yeah, I mean that that was a big signal for me um, when we had that CPI report and it uh, it ended up going higher. Um, you've got that's why we look at the fundamentals. That's why we watch carefully because you have to see these reactions. You know, I was expecting the pound to strengthen on that CPI. Because it was really strong, it may it you know cause BOE expectations to rise. That all points to the pound continuing this move. I'm not saying massively, but I would have liked a test of uh, the 85 zone. We we couldn't get there, and now we're higher. Um, this is even when we're expecting the bank to hike maybe 50 pips. So you have you can't ignore the price action. The price action will tell you what the market wants and where it's sitting. And that's where you have to look for your opportunities. So now we know that despite whatever the Bank of England is going to do, there's more chance that, that euro sterling goes higher or the pound gets sold off. So if you get a if you get a decent pop in the quid, that's something you got to look at. Um, and the same when you look at uh, sterling yen, which is guppy alley. Uh, that's what uh, the nickname is for sterling yen. Um, we know that yen is very weak. So if this gives you an opportunity, if this gives you a dip, You've got to think, well, that's something to get, maybe look at the other side of, fade that trade, because if the yen is going to remain weak, this is going to go right back up again. Um, and that's that's what we do for trading. That's why we look at the data, look at the fundamentals um, to try and pick out, you know, which side we want to be on at any given time. Um, I'm going to have a quick look at uh, dollar China, and then I shall hand it over to the k Um I didn't get anything off up at the 720s. I thought we might be getting a, a, a break, but we haven't. We're back under. Um, it's done what I wanted it to do, though. It's held this area almost to the pip, um, as I said yesterday, 7, 16, 70, uh, which was a bit of a break point, bit of a former support and resistance area. We've held that. We've bounced. Not getting up towards the highs, though, so maybe a bit of indecision coming in on this, um, again, depending on what the Chinese are going to be doing with rates and so on and so forth, but now the price action is suggesting we might be getting a little bit of a pause. So I may look to take a bit more off my longs here and start pulling up my stop behind uh, to lock in the rest or at least lower my risk. The trend hasn't broken yet. Um, if we're below here, then obviously the next level is down towards these lows, seven tens again. Um, if we get under there, then it looks like we may have more of a defined top up here. Uh, so for now, it's looking okay, but uh, I would like it back above uh, 719 and these uh, prior highs. We shall see whether that happens or not. Okay, over to you, mate. Yeah, sure. Um, what am I going to look at? Well, I guess I'm going to look at uh, a couple of those sterling pairs. Take the screen. Okay, first of all, sterling yen. Um, has put in a, a, a big rally um, from uh, from uh, April April onwards um, with with the yen dollar yen and, and yen finding a top again. Um, we are uh, and there's no exception. Most of the yen pairs are, are higher, but um, 
I'd keep an eye on what's happening here in this sterling yen because there is um, a pretty decent area where we kept also on the first attempt around 182, <clears throat> 3540. Um, if you look at this as a kind of a kind of a channel, uh, that could be reaching up into the 185s. Actually, it's a daily chart, so the the, the it's pretty uh, pretty well. And then we have to look on the other side, though, if sterling gets sold off on the sterling yen, you have to look at what happens at the 180 and a half. Um, so we are trading 181 and a half right now, but watch out what's happened at uh, 180 and a half. And so far, uh, the setback that we saw stopped um, at, at 100 and pretty much at 180 dead uh, um, yesterday and the day before. So there seems to be an interest to buy sterling yen still at 180 dead. But then keep an eye out of whether, whether we close above or below 180 and a half, I'd say today. And then you take uh, the Trump level at, uh, at 180, the figure. If that would start to go, then there's something wrong with the sterling. And, and I would not be really looking at being long sterling, uh, sterling yen right now. Um, cable. Well, I think the cable is pretty much yesterday's high, um, not yesterday, Monday, uh, Friday's high here around the uh, 128.40s. That's going to be your um, your measurement point above here. And below, I'd keep an eye on that lo those lows here, 126.90 down to 126.85. 90. If, if cable starts to move back below there, there's a, a fair chance, I think, we are, we are going to revisit 126. And that 126 right now for me is, is key. Um, um, we have a FIB here. We have a, a trend line coming in around there as well. Today, if we see sterling weakness, 126 is key. For as long as we're above 126, I'd say if you look at those moves, it's pretty steady and, and, and it does like the... the the, the good waves and and looks like a move that can go higher, which should take us somewhere to 130 if the dollar continues to be a bit under the cush. But watch out for 126. If that goes, then it may spell trouble for the sterling. And then we, we will be looking at levels, well, back down in, into the 124s, I'd say. Um, but first of all, it could already hold 126.80, in which case this is really a small correction. And we should be, we should be, and I think I've got it here. Um, we should be on our way to, to this one around uh, around 130, um, which is the, the, the correction of the whole move down from 2014 to, to what we saw in 2022. Um, it's 130, 38.2. So uh, that's going to be a bit of a, Magic level, is, uh, we can see it here as well. Back in 22, it held, bounced, and then when it broke, that's where the, the, the big decline came from. Um, so 130 is going to be important if ever we get there. Euro sterling. Um, Euro sterling is, um, as, as people know, yesterday after the CPI, um, I, I did take my short Euro sterling off because I'm a little bit like what I thought the market would would be doing is or anticipating is saying that like, okay we've seen what we what we had to see as as Ryan was already saying this whole move uh, had been directed by um, expectations building for the Bank of England but also data not falling out of bed and and at one stage we were talking about it even compared to the, to, to Europe the the data were slightly better because we saw some some data starting to slow down in Germany etc and 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 in, in the UK the data were holding so this was a pretty logic move somewhere but then you have to reassess right then you have to reassess so what happened yesterday is on this this blip whatever I, I took mine back and now we I'm in wait and see mode first uh, level of interest just above here is 25.35 on 86 and then here 86.60 and if, uh, if if those start to go over the day, then I think there's a really fair chance we are going to have a visit of 87. Downside, I'd say 
first of all around here 8580 for a starter and then around here i've got another level around 8570 so 857080 that's where we're looking at if that breaks we could need an extension to it and and go and have a re visit back down to 85s but it's going to take a monster hawkish and for good reasons bank of england i think to take this one through through 85 there's i've also have support um around 85.10 here around this 85.10 i do have support there as well it's going to take a very hawkish bank of england and and for the very good reasons to take this one through 85 i i really think it's going to be important here uh, if i see such a move develop over uh, after the bank of england i'm going to be very tempted to counter trade this that for um euro sterling cable sterling yen um that's about it what i um wanted to show euro dollar euro dollar for as long as we are above this this line here uh 108.95 109 and a quarter it's hard to stand in front of the train okay i mean it looks like every hour it's going it's going up a few pips i'm not per se looking to trade euro dollar uh, also, because I don't want to start to buy it here and then uh, buy like 10 points before the top or so. But um, I think it's a bit late perhaps to jump on. But um, if everything stays all equal, um, we may be in for a revisit of, of, of those high 110s. Uh, 111 is going to be important. And we have a, an intermediate stage here um, at, one, uh, at 110 and a half. Uh, some people take it uh, from here. Uh, is that the one? Yeah, and that would be that you see that that was the 10940 that, that people were looking at as well. Um okay, a lot of people are looking for 112. It's possible, it's possible because the euro is really uh really very big right now. Um, but I'm I prefer not to trade it. If I have anything, I prefer to trade it via the crosses because that always looks like that a little bit cleaner. Um, and as a matter of fact talking about crosses I'm uh, I'm trying to see if this one gets back into this uh, into this channel here um euro Aussie um, we've broken down and then um, remember I spoke about this important zone around the 158 mid to low 158s and we went to test it and started to go up and now the euro is really gathering strength and um, it's possible that it's already holding 161 uh, call it 7080. We went to her for a little test this morning again, uh, and uh, it does look like it would want to hold. Um, keep an eye on what's happening at the end of the day here around 161, call it 6070 and possibly 162. If we close the day above 162, I think there's a, there's another extension to be neat uh, to it uh, on, on the Euro Aussie. If in turn Aussie gain strength and it's uh we are about to retest the 68 there um it this, this could also be affected and and, and perhaps fail um we'll, we'll see what happens i have a very very small risk on here and uh what else are we looking at um yeah the dollar cat uh a lot of it points to 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 this zone here 130 let's call it 7080 130 7080 could be a, a decent enough zone for the dollar cat to keep an eye on if not 130 the figure right um and that is for as long as we now stay below those prior one those prior spike high prior low here around uh, 132 2030 as long as dollar cat is below there the the, the risk is just a risk because the dollar in general is um under the cush apart from versus uh, the uh, yen, of course. Um, Aussie dollar, well, here we are, 68.05, 68.20. 20. 68.05.20 is your resistance. Now, again, we could be starting to build something like that, which if it takes us up to uh, 30.35, that could be enough. I think this is a, a, a good enough little resistance here, and uh, why not start to build something uh, like this? Um, if uh, we get back down 67.40, we have been talking about that already a couple of times. 
6740 is also my level. If you get back down and stay below 6740, then the party may be over for the Aussie. But for now, uh, I think we need a catalyzer in dollar to bring this one back down, not just Aussie weakness. We need something for the for the dollar. Um, Kiwi as well. Kiwi held this, uh, these, these lows here around 61.40, and we are already back now uh, above the, the 61.90 figure. Um, we could be in for a retest. Um, 62.33 is also a, uh, always a level that I was watching, and we had a little spike above there, a little look above there, um, um, I think last week. Yeah. And then we, we, we failed. So keep an eye on what's happening, 62.34, 35. On the, on the Kiwi dollar, we're not too far away. And then uh, we'll have to look, we have to look at this here now. We really have to look at this here. I'm still watching the, the, the mid 142s. Um, that should be a decent level. We had one try here at 30. We had another try uh, at 35 and, uh, and capped. And I thought like with looking at the rest of the dollars, um, we should have already corrected let me yeah. my screen. we should have already corrected down to 141 looking at the rest of the dollars and it doesn't and that's thanks to those guys at the at the bank of japan i think they they are just telling the market well hit me you know um it, it, it looks like that they they look to be a bit masochistic for me um they 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 are telling the markets we are not there yet uh noguchi again overnight is putting pressure on uh, on on the end um, because if it would be only for the dollar and looking at the rest of the dollar pairs, I think we should have already been retesting 141 or even why not down to 140. But we are hanging around here, so the risk is to me now again if the dollar refines some footing against the rest, which is a bit in doubt right now because we we continue to sell dollars versus the rest. But if the dollar regains some footing, uh, I think this this one is is perhaps going to blow out, and and we are going perhaps over here. Remember, 145 is the level that a lot of people think that the MOF should intervene. The way yen crosses go, I'm not even sure that they are going to only look at the dollar yen, uh, because if you look at stuff like euro yen, for instance, we have broken now. And uh, uh, Blake was the first one to show this credit to, to who credit is due. Uh, from the 1990s, we, uh, we are breaking above. And this is uh, all happening around 155 figure a quarter. And today we broke above. And if you close the week above this 155, call it figure a quarter, what is going, what is going to stop it, right? And, and, and again, um, the, the Bank of Japan is telling the people, well, we are, we are not ready to move yet. So what is the market doing? You can't, you can't stay long yen. I mean, it, it's just too costly to be long yen for more than, a, more than a couple of days. If you want to be long yen, you need to be right very quickly. Now, if this goes on, and, and again, uh, I don't, I don't want to call what, it, what is not going to happen, but is the MOF only going to look at dollar yen? which for now is high but stable, or is it going to look at other yen pairs? And, and that's uh, now the question that, I, uh, that I'm asking. And uh, because we are back at the top end of the, uh, of the Kiwi yen, for instance, go back, to, go back to the high before the global financial crisis over 2015, um, target is around 90. We are uh, a bit away, but if the end continues to weaken, we, we can't even rule out that we are going to go for, for a test there as well. Um, I don't know. It, it, a lot is about speed, right? But uh, I think at some point when the MOF will see that the yen is weakening against everything, perhaps they will start to get a little bit nervous, especially that they don't get the help of the Bank of Japan. Right, Ali, your gold. You see, we don't forget you. Eh? We are always, we always come back on what people are asking. Um, it's looking fragile, but it's looking less fragile, in my opinion, than silver is. So we do have a bit of support here. Um, I remember, I've I've already been showing this trend line before. 
comes in at around 19, 12, 13 right now. Well, yeah, around 13. So even if we get down here, if we break this little uh, uh, wedge um, around 19.20, which is very possible, we can go there. And then I have additional levels around 19, 19.05, OK? I know a lot of people are calling for this to come off, but then with the dollar under the cush, um, I'm not sure if this is going to fall out of bed. But if it follows silver, it should stay heavy, at least. Silver is in a bit of a different uh, picture here. Um, once it's broken under 23.20, it did not look back. And, and we are, uh, where is it right now? Where is it right now? We are 22.60, so we are already under this uh, under the May low. 22 and a quarter, 22, those are levels that I'm watching. Um, I am having a very, very tiny bit in a 22, but I'm, I'm more interested to see if we can get back down here to the 21s, where I'll, uh, where I'll add to my long term. I'm still in my very, very long term position, but uh, as people know, I've been uh, scaling down uh, on, on that position when we were here. So um, um, I'm, uh, I'm very patient. But I may start to add if we visit uh, 22, which is really not to be excluded. The way this is is, is dropping relatively fast, right? Okay, and um, yeah, for the rest, watch those yields. It's a bit euro. The differentials have been moving, have been moving in the direction of the euro, but I will argue that um, we're still not breaking the danger zone if if this differential goes above minus 145 bps that should really put a bit under the euro okay but even already going into the zone the euro should continue it's already a bit without and the differential is coming down massively but um keep an eye on that zone you know we are trading at minus 154 ish bps you get back above 150 into the 145 that should put another bit under the euro Perhaps not specifically euro dollar, although it is, although it is rising, <clears throat> but also on the euro crosses. And that, Brian, is it for me? Thank you very much, mate, uh, for your valued insight as always. Yeah, dollar CAD, uh, I'm keeping uh, half an eye on amongst things because I've I've got a that thirty eighty level is uh, a big one for me. Um, let's see if this works again. Can you see? Um, no. No, oh, we don't see your speed. Oh, I don't know what's happening in this poll. I this yesterday was stale after you left. It's same thing. Can you share your screen again? And and give it back. And no, I'll take it. Okay. Oh, did you did you give it up? Yes, I did. Okay. You Kate, you put it on and then I'll take it and then let's see if that works. Right. Entire screen. That one. Um, I've lost my screen sharing, but your screen is back. Um, Shall I take it and, and you comment on the dollar cat or? No, you, you had the level anyway, 3080. Um, yeah. That's, that's the level I was looking at. Um, I need to have a look at what's going on with that uh, issue that's piped up again. Correct. Technology, eh? Um, anyway, um, on the card today, we've got uh, the only real US data is initial jobless claims. Keep an eye on that. That uh, came in at a bit of a surprise to expectations last week um, at 262. Unchanged on the week before, but it was expected to drop to 240 odd. Um, expected to come in there or thereabouts at 260. Um, and just uh, that housing data later on. Um, from the US existing home sales, one to keep an eye on. And we get the flash reading from my one of my favorite economic data points, the Eurozone consumer confidence flash uh, expected to remain as a minus number as it has done since its inception, um, apart from about three or four times. So that's on the cards later. Again, with the BOE, be careful. Look at the numbers, the vote numbers. Look at the vote numbers underneath in terms of who's voting for what type of hike, cut, whatever, hold. Um, and look at the statement to see expectations from the bank as to rates going forward. That's likely to guide the quid today. Um, and as much as I think it might end up lower on the day uh, than where we start going in, I don't think it's going to break 
uh, the overall trend for now. Um, and Kay mentioned the levels where that might happen. Anyway, thank you everybody for coming to the flow show. Thank you to Kay for all his uh, valuable insight as well. Um, be safe over the Bank of England and uh, we shall cut through the jib of it all tomorrow. Thank you very much, guys and girls. Keep well. Thank you, Ryan. Hey, traders. This is Blake Morrow with Forex Analytics. Thanks for stopping by our YouTube channel. Don't forget to like these videos, share them, and subscribe to our channel so you don't miss any of the content that we provide here for free. Thanks for stopping by. I'll see you in the next video. Thank <laughs> you.